right, thanks everybody. Uh, we're gonna get started with our next uh, presenters. Um, this is uh, a collaboration between between our team, and we have we have Chris Herring representing our team, and then we also have Mike Bailey. Um, Chris is our uh, director of publishing, uh, so he manages the publishing program here at MBC Universal, and so um, manages the product development and, and um, feature development of uh, our publisher system. We call it Publisher. Um, and then Mike Bailey comes to us from Sci-Fi. We, uh, you know, one of our major cable brands. Um, we have about 30, 40 brands across the company. Um, Mike and team were one of the early adopters of Drupal here at MBC Universal. Um, uh, Parts of your sites are on Drupal 6, parts are on Drupal 7, but uh, they, they've been a big uh, proponent of uh, a lot of what we've done over the last couple of years. So, hand over to Chris. Thanks, Rob. Can you all hear me? Yeah, good. Um, so, like Rob said, I'm Chris Herring. Um, I lead the publishing program for uh, uh, ONTS, Operations and Technical Services, which is uh, our organization uh, that's headed by our CIO. Um, well, ONCS actually is headed by John Wallace, um, but uh, ultimately we report into the CIO now. But nonetheless, this is a great segue from Angie's talk into my talk, and I swear we did not collaborate on this. <laughs> Angie and I really didn't even have a chance to sync up because we've both been so busy, but um, we obviously feel very passionately about the same things. And so our talk today is really about taking the best practices and uh, opportunities that open source provides and trying to build and foster that collaboration and communication internally. And I asked Mike to join me today because they've been, Sci-Fi has been a great partner in this endeavor. Um, he's going to tell you all about his giant Sci-Fi technology team and how they've been able to really contribute to uh, everything that we've done. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just get started. So um, like Rob said, um, Mike and I are here today, and um, so I've been working in the uh, media and publishing industries my entire career. Um, I, I got involved with Drupal really about four years ago, um, but then, you know, as part of the organization that I'm part of now within NBC Universal, I really saw that there was an opportunity to do something big, and that's when we started to build our uh, publisher product. Um, so we'll, I'll get into that in a few moments, but. Really, we're going to try to answer a few questions that you may have uh, on mind today based on some of the talks we've already heard, which is what is meant by internal open source software. So the acronym for open source, if you Google it or hashtag it, um, is OSS. And I just thought if I dropped a lowercase i in front of it, it'll probably pick up some steam. So um, I might get in trouble with the Apple lawyers, but hey, there's no bad press, right? So I'm going to go with that. Um, so I'm going to try to answer that and what we mean by it, specifically what I mean by it uh, as it relates to our publisher product, um, which, uh, as Rob mentioned, is our Drupal distribution um, within NBC Universal that all people can collaborate and contribute to. Um, and then can we, can we describe an example? This is when Mike's going to step up and talk a little bit about how he's contributed to the product and, and the process. And then if, you, if this does sound interesting to you, how you can get involved, I'll leave you with that. So. Um, so what is internal open source development and maybe how is that different than external open source development or traditional open source development? It's not different. It's the same thing. It's just focused on an internal product. So just trying to leverage those same um, best practices and best ideas that come from open source, including increased collaboration, which should ultimately result in less redundancy across the company. There's lots of uh, examples of that within NB any sort of large media conglomerate, and I'll just use NBC Universal as an example. You know, the idea that 10 or 20 of our brands are building the same sort of either either experiences within Drupal itself, or building the same uh, modules or extensions to Drupal. Um, I think you know the the idea that we should just collaborate on that specification and share the 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 effort to build that functionality once is really what we're what we're trying to get at today. Um, and really just this idea that we should just build once and share it um, and really have open communication about what's being built, very transparent communication about how things are being built, and just be open to ideas. Um, and as Angie said, you know, we should fail early and often and in public. And, you know, within NBC Universal, public means within our company, but you know, we we can do that. We could still use those same ideas. Um, and ultimately, I really, I, I know I've seen this firsthand from our team, um, but working in this manner generally results in higher quality software. I've seen, like I said, I see that firsthand. I see the number of defects that we 
uh, introduced go down over time, the more that we collaborate with uh, brands outside of our own little world. So um, I think there's plenty of opportunity there. And, you know, the other thing that I think is uh, important to mention, because I think it gets overlooked a lot of times, especially with internal efforts like this, is the friendship that, uh, that Angie mentioned in her talk. Um, Alex Ross, who's on our team, and you've heard his uh, Drupal name, Bleen, mentioned many times today. Um, Alex and I are friends now, and we met at a Drupal meetup. Um, he, worked for the, he worked for the company, he worked for a division of iVillage, and I didn't even know that. And, you know, we're friends now, and um, I, it's a little absurd to a certain degree that uh, I had to meet him at a, at a meetup, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that, that we're friends and that we can continue to, you know, foster that sort of friendship throughout the company. Same thing with Steven at Sci-Fi and others throughout the company. Um, trying to think what else I had here to mention. Um, so really, you know, I, I think, you know, we can identify common features that are specific to one brand because more than likely they're not specific. Maybe they just seem specific to one brand and really just try to collaborate on that specification to make them generic so that all brands can use it. That's the main um, message I wanted to try to get across here. So if I compare the Drupal ecosystem to the publisher ecosystem, um, the circles there are not to scale. <laughs> um, if I tried to do it to scale, it you know wouldn't even be a, a dot. So um, I, I got these numbers uh, from Drupal.org itself. So I, I know they're a little off from Dries's presentation, but nonetheless, there are you know tens of thousands of developers committing code and tens of thousands of modules available and you know nearly a million if not over a million community members that are involved in in Drupal every single day within the company just trying to foster these ideas we have about 13 developers committing code to that have committed code to publisher itself um, and you know on our team there's only about six or eight uh, developers within uh, our publishing uh, team itself so a lot of these folks are actually outside of the team so I'm really proud of that and that's I really feel like we're just sort of scraping the surface here in terms of how many people can do this within the company. We have about 90 uh, modules available. Um, as, it, as you can see, the little asterisk there, you know, 66 come from the community themselves, so we don't have to maintain those. You know, those are 66 modules that NBC Universal Brands can leverage within Publisher, and we don't, like I said, we don't maintain them, but we may contribute a patch to them, and we have. 24 of them are custom. Um, so those are the modules that the publisher ecosystem maintains within the company. Um, and there's about 50 community members. And by community members, I mean people that work for, on, you know, product or specification, documentation, um, user experience, QA. All those folks make up what I call the publisher ecosystem. Um, so what have we built so far in Publisher 7 that's using this, this model? It's really everything. Um, even the definition of our core content types, um, they were all done very openly and transparently um, with any of the brands that have been involved with Publisher or thinking about getting involved with Publisher. Um, the Site Catalyst or Omniture module is maintained by a member of our team, uh, Lean also. So that's actually available on Drupal.org, but um, you know, built using this module. We already heard about the Dart module for that. Um, inside NBC Universal, we have uh, an identity system, which we call IDX for login and registration. So we built an integration to IDX. Um, and again, we built that once, and it's now available for all brands. So they would never have to build that integration again. Um, and next, we're working uh, in collaboration with SciFi on a schedule feed integration um, for pulling uh, feed data directly into Drupal or Publisher and figuring out what to do with it, whether we automatically generate pages or just automatically generate the schedule that itself that get, gets displayed on the various brand sites, but that's what we're working on. Today, Mike's going to talk about the integration with the platform, and for those of you who aren't familiar with our little Comcast world here, when we say the platform with a lowercase t and a capital P, we mean our video service provider, the platform, which is owned by Comcast. So, Mike, uh, take it away. Thanks, Chris. So I'm Mike Bailey. I'm the director of technology for the Sci-Fi Channel. For those of you that don't know me, um, like Chris men mentioned, I have a giant team of developers. All two of them. They're sitting right there, Stephen and Anton. Um, 
together, we build a lot of different websites. Um, we maintain a lot of different code bases, um, and we're on a lot of different platforms. Um, just to name a few of those, um, you know, we run obviously uh, sci-fi.com, chillertv.com, Blaster and Device, our entertainment and technology blogs, um, sci-fi-games.com, and many other smaller websites. But it's it's a lot of websites. Um, on top of that. These websites also generate content for our emerging platforms, our mobile platforms, um, things like iOS, Android, um, Xbox, Roku, Windows 8, Windows Phone, and the list goes on. It's actually going to be growing uh, even more throughout this year. We're going to be on more platforms. And so when I got to Sci-Fi, we had flat web pages. Nothing was hooked up to a CMS, um, and this was just two years ago. So um, we've come a long ways, and we hope by the end of this year, all of our sites are on Drupal. Um, but in that ecosystem, we started working about um, sometime last year, we started working with Chris and his team to really come up with a solution um, that so we could be more agile with our giant team of two developers. Um, and be able to tap into the other developers here at NBC. Um, so the solution we came up with was Drupal and open source. Um, and we came up with it for many different reasons. I'm going to touch on just a few of those reasons. Um, one is uh, smaller teams contributing together make one big team. So we, we recognize that with our small team, we were not going to be able to maintain all the platforms that we were trying to get on. So in order to help that, you know, we wanted to actually tap into all the other great developers. You know, we got Marvin at Oxygen. We got, uh, you know, Robin at USA. We have, you know, good developers at Bravo. I mean, there's a lot of developers out there in this company, and I think together we can uh, obviously be a big team of developers. Um, Maintaining a single code base. This is a really big thing for me because, like I said, when I got to you know Sci-Fi, we had sites on Movable Type, you know Drupal, um, flat web pages, um, you know so many different platforms. That maintaining the security updates for all those and just maintaining the the core you know code that goes into those projects um, just makes it impossible. So. Like I said, I hope by the end of this year, all of Sci-Fi's platforms will be on Drupal and basically Drupal 7. So we have a, you know some sites on Drupal 6. We have some sites on Drupal 7 that we're just starting to launch. Um, but we hope to be there by the end of this year. Three, outside vendors make our lives a lot easier. So. You know, through the years at NBC, we've contracted with lots of vendors. You know, we had them build stuff for us because we obviously don't have the team to do it in-house. Um, a lot of times that's one-off, you know, things that we build for a show or for, you know, whatever marketing thing that's going on. And really, you know, we want these vendors to contribute to our core platform, which is going to be Drupal. So we've already started this process, like with our friends from uh, Lullabot. They're actually building chillertv.com for us. And so with that partnership with them, we've been able to actually contribute then their code back into the publisher um, platform. Like they did some great editorial workflow um, things for us to be able to connect shows, episodes, and seasons um, in a really easy way for our editorial staff. So they're able to contribute as well. It's not just our internal team contributing. It's not just the Drupal community. It's also our vendors. For art, you know, I think um, Angie and Dries touched on this a lot. Chris touched on this, but our contributions can help the Drupal community solve bigger problems. So there's not many, you know, there's 20,000 developers at Drupal.org. I'm not sure that more than a handful of those can say that they've been able to keep a Drupal site up to get 30 or 40 million page views in a matter of a few hours. Um, I think with our our expertise and the you know all of our findings throughout the years that we can um, really contribute back our scale um, to those smaller developers that maybe they're just running a blog, maybe they're just running a 
smaller website, but they can really utilize the technologies that we've put in place to be able to handle when they get on Hacker News, when they get on the front page of Hacker News and their Drupal site just can't handle the pressure. So those are just some, you know, those are some of the big reasons. There's lots of other little reasons and there's lots of quirks as well with Drupal. I mean, we've all heard it, the Drupalisms and stuff like that. But overall, I think it's a really, you know, a good product that we can really build together. Um, so now I'm going to actually go into one of the modules that we built, which is the platform, as Chris had mentioned. Uh, this is our video CMS. This is where all of our metadata is stored for videos. So titles, descriptions, uh, publish dates, um, the locations of those files on Alchemize Network. Um, you know, this was a module that we really needed in-house. A lot of our other brands were starting to move to the platform. And when we took this on, we could have just built this for sci-fi. We could have just taken that, you know, a stab at it, integrated it in a way that wouldn't be useful for the rest of the company. But instead, we really looked at the big picture of what other divisions were doing here at uh, NBC. So we integrated it in a way that uh, allows other people within our company to share that and be able to use that just right out of the box. It's pretty simple. You uh, install the module and um, have a, you set up a few settings. Um, this is the actual settings page. There's only three things here. There's you set up your feed URL from the platform. You set up your player URL, which is a custom players that you can build with inside the platform. And then if you want to limit your selection of what content this site can see, so if you have multiple brands, you may want to filter your views based on a show or a, a network or something like that. So we added that as well. Um, once you do that, you're ready to go. You can start building um, you can start building pages, blocks, for those of us that know Drupal. Um, and you can do that in a really easy way. It's uh, something most Dr Drupal developers know. It's uh, called views. Um, so this is a screen for views. This is uh, where you build views. This is where you build your landing pages, your blocks of content, your related content, all that good stuff. Um, you add a, you know, a title. You add a few fields in there. Um, it's set up in a way that uh, you know, every Drupal developer probably knows. Um, more than likely. Um, we pull in those fields from the platform so you can add them to your view. Um, you can filter those views, again, based on shows and categories and stuff like that. Um, you can give it a URL, and you can even use the Drupal pager system, which is built in Drupal functionality. And we did all this um, without ever having to have that content put into Drupal. So this is all used. We're using MP or MPX, which is the product, the video CMS for the platform, um, basically as a database. So this is just like connecting to if you had a MongoDB or you had a MySQL database that stored this content, we're just connecting directly into the platform. So uh, with that, you can build you know, pages that have categories. They have videos that play on the screen. Um, they have listings within those categories. There's titles, descriptions, all that good stuff. And this page, you know, besides the design part of it, you know, you could get that content on the page, you know, in a few hours. You know, it's not not that difficult. So, uh, you know, that's that's great and good. And now everybody else in the company is able to use this. But, you know, there's certain brands that might need different things, and we realize that. And that's what's great about Drupal. So there may be a site out there, you know, like a news organization that may need to do deeper integrations with, uh, you know, with the platform. They may need, you know, playlisting and they may need to be able to do different stuff than we do. So that's where they're able to contribute back. They could take this module um, and they could add a, you know, a feed call to the platform that pulls in those playlists so you could choose that on the feed that you build. So that way your video player could, you know, playlist through those and do it in a in a way that never even has to touch necessarily touch the Drupal core database. Um, now some of you that know Drupal may say, well, there's a platform module already in the ecosystem on Drupal.org. And there is. And what happened is that that module came out a week after we completed our module. Literally a, like a week, seven days. 
that came out. So now what we're doing is we're actually working with the platform to uh, uh, integrate our the things that we've done into their module. And really, we took a different approach than the platform as well. So it may even be able to live as a separate module or we could add features to that module to be able to turn off what we're doing versus what they're doing. So their module actually pulls in all the content into Drupal, which, you know, for, you know, at SciFi we have, you know, about 15,000 videos, which probably could be imported into Drupal pretty easily. Um, but we took the, you know, the opposite approach of let's keep the video data where it can be edited by our video editors. Um, but, you know, so there's a trade off there. So we're doing one thing and they're kind of doing another thing, but I think we can come together and bring both those modules into one and release it out to the, there to the world. So, um, you know, it happens, but we can get there. So that's the, that's the platform module. And that's really, basically I want to sum it up by saying, I think, you know, as a, organization we have so many good developers in this company and I think we really just need to come together and you know build out those core things you know I've heard well you know from other people in the organization that you know well why do I have to give this away if I build it that this is our this is our you know technology and we're not in the business of technology we're in the business of serving video and getting that content to our consumers and the platform not the platform, the platform, but the Publisher 7 platform doesn't stop you from doing those things. We've done a lot of custom things on top of, you know, the publisher ecosystem that, uh, that allows us to do those customizations, but the core functionality of what a website is, um, is all there. So um, that's all I got, and I'll hand it back over to Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, I think it's important to mention a couple of things before I just go on to my next slide. The one thing is, um, although uh, Mike and his large team uh, built this platform integration, um, they did it as sort of a part-time endeavor with us, right? So our team works using an agile iteration-based uh, process. And uh, you're going to hear more about how agile and Drupal are perfect for each other uh, in a minute from Adam Ash, who's up next. But um, so the way we went about it from a process perspective, because I think that's sometimes the largest barrier to figuring out how to work together, is that a member of Mike's giant team um, just joined our iterations um, for two or three iterations, I think this one took. But um, not on a full-time basis, right? He didn't come and live in our offices. He came for our iteration planning meetings. He came for our acceptance meeting. He communicated as if he was a native member of the team, right? Communicated with our QA folks communicated with our specialists that write up our, our documentation. But, you know, just as we might have somebody working remotely from, you know, Portland, Oregon, this person was working remotely from 30 Rock and would just come over for, for the meetings. And it really wasn't any heavier than that. And I think that's a, a good exam, example of how we can do things like this, especially in a large company like ours. So um, the number one question I get when I talk about this is how can I get involved? Um, and the easiest answer I have to that is to just jump in, and that's exactly what these guys did when they heard we were launching a, a Drupal 7 product. Um, they just jumped in and started talking to us and collaborating, and there's a number of ways of doing that within the company. Um, so, like I said, everything we do is, is, pretty, is documented very well and very transparent, so we have this roadmap for everything that we're working on for a publisher. You don't have to write down these URLs. You'll all get this presentation later. So. Um, but you can just go on there and see what we're up to, and if something looks interesting to you, even if it's further down on the roadmap, and it's something you would like that would benefit your brand, and you would like to work on it, well, you can just start working on it um, and just collaborate with our team to do so. Uh, we have this uh, user voice set up where you can vote on uh, new features or existing features that are planned for the product, and you can just vote them up to make them a higher priority um, uh, or, or introduce a new one. Um, our documentation is all done wiki-based, and like all good wikis, it's completely open to anyone who wants to contribute to it. So if you happen to be using our product or thinking about it and you feel like there's an area of documentation that's missing in the, the uh, using the ethos of duocracy, just do it. Just write that article. Nothing's stopping you from doing so. 
Um, but a few other ways that you could get involved. Uh, we have this general questions uh, email. Uh, there's a lot of distribution lists in this company, so I just created another one. Um, it's just publisher.contrib at nbcuni.com, and all 13 of those contributors to Publisher are on that list, as well as a bunch of other uh, core team members as well. So you're not sure where to start, just send a note there. You can do it that way. All of our code, like any good open source project, is available on GitHub, although because it's ours, we have to you know, authorize that first, but it is available. Um, we have an IRC chat room going all day long that the team set up, and they just did it on their own uh, on Freenote. You can just join that at any time and post a question in there. Like all good open source projects, uh, uh, Publisher has its own Twitter account. I'm not going to say who maintains it, but uh, they, you know, he, uh, the Publisher product uh, tweets about what's going on with Publisher on a day-to-day -day basis, pictures of the team and what we're working on and, and so forth. So you could follow or DM Publisher directly and ask them a question. Um, and one of the things I set up most recently is this uh, idea of an editorial review board. So we all know that the Drupal interface is, uh, as uh, Angie alluded to earlier, could use some help. And we're trying to contribute that back to the community and really focus on that. There's a few people on the team that are fo focusing on it every day. But what we did was we set up this editorial review board where we could just um, propose new UX ideas to various editors around the company. So not not the brand leaders, not the tech folks. These are just editors that work on various sites around the company, and they can come to these meetings. It's the first Thursday every other month, and just think about and talk about like what their pain points are and what would be helpful to them, and see what we're sort of planning. Um, so if you have an editor on your team, or you are an editor and you want to join that, just let me know. So um, just some final thoughts. I think. Uh, you know, I, I think the message is pretty clear that we can, you know, lef leverage the best practices of the Drupal community and uh, do what's important and, you know, share and reduce redundancy um, and duplicate effort across the company. But, you know, the, the main thing I want to say is that obviously Drupal is very big. I feel like publisher is a little bit smaller and a little bit easier to get involved. Uh, with and and again, if it's if there's an area that's important to you, that's what you should focus on. Don't focus on Drupal. Don't focus on even Publisher. Or how do I use Publisher? But just focus on that one feature or that one thing within Publisher that may be important to you or your brand, whether it's editorial usability or image management transformation, video integration, or an integration with a partner that maybe we don't even know about that maybe more NBCU brands are going to use over time. You can just fo focus on those things. So. Um, and, and like I said, it's not just it's not just focus on them or read about it, but uh, using that duocracy, you know, ethos. Just dive in and and do it. So um, that's really it. That's that's our talk. That's our spiel. Um, so thanks very much. And I guess we can we can take some questions if there are any. First session without questions. Yeah, oh, there's one. So how did you grow from, you know, just, you know, I imagine you started with just one site. Yeah. Right? And so how did you how did you make that leap to actually getting, you know, multiple sites? Because there's a, there's always there's always politics and controversy around, oh, that's not my CMS, this is my CMS. And yeah. All those kinds of Yep, it's a good question. Um, so our first site was actually there's a gentleman sitting right in front of you, uh, Jesse Bissett from Telemundo. That was our first site that ran on a previous version of Publisher, which we now call Publisher Classic because it's classic. Um, uh, but you know, I think that really paved the way for us in just proving that that could work for a large site like Telemundo. Um, I think it just really opened the eyes to a lot of different brands. Then Sci-Fi jumped on next. Uh, Sci-Fi.com is running on, on Publisher Classic as well. But I must say, I, I, I had great support from management to do this. Um, and they really encouraged me to sort of spread the word. And um, you know, ultimately, that, that got up to literally the highest levels of the company, that we should do this and we should reduce duplicate effort across you know, all the brands and divisions as much as possible. So then that message became very powerful to the, to the suit wearing types. So. Sam has a question. Of course, Sam has a question. Of course, Sam has a question. Uh, speaking of suit wearing types. Which you are not. Which I am not. Um, you just play one today. I just play one today, exactly. Uh, are there any, um, besides the technical advantages of being able to share code and being able to share development resources, are there any 
knowledge sharing resources, there's cost saving things or anything non-technical that you get as an advantage of participating in the publisher program? Yes. Um, Care to elaborate? <laughs> um, all of the above. I think, uh, you know, that's somewhat hard to quantify. Um, but yeah, I think there are lots of knowledge sharing ideas. I mean, I love our wiki. It's really been in development for three years. And, um, you know, there's, I don't know, well over a couple of hundred articles on there on everything that's re related to publisher. And all of our release notes are done there. I mean, there's, there's a wealth of knowledge that can happen just from re reading the wiki. But I also think there's a wealth of knowledge that can happen just from participating in one of our iteration planning sessions. Just coming to that meeting, hearing what we're thinking about for the upcoming iteration. Um, and, and from Sci-Fi's perspective, they got to influence what we were working on by coming to that meeting and saying, look, this is really important to us. We have Defiance that's launching. It's a you know multi hundred billion dollar effort for the a million dollar effort for the company. I'm sure they'd like it to be billion, um, and and that was a powerful message. So just knowing that that's happening for a brand, I'm not sure I would have found out about that probably probably via press release if it weren't for our process, right? So um, yeah, I think that's a good example. If that helps, Susie. Now that you have quite a few brands starting to build on the Publisher 7 platform. What are you most excited about like in the next six months or so? Because that's it kind of changes things for you guys. Yeah. Yes. It's a yeah, lot of volume. It does. I think um, I'm excited about um, sort of, actually, you led an effort to launch Sprout online very recently uh, on Publisher 7, so congrats on that. Um, I'm excited about not being involved in a launch. And I know that sounds counterproductive, but um, <laughs> if we do things right, this core team should not know about a launch, right? I mean, all the launches that happen to every site that, that Drupal runs on, the Drupal core contributors don't know about them every day, right? So we shouldn't know about them, right? If we do things right and we're collaborating and we're being very transparent about our plans, launches should just happen without affecting the core team. So I'm, I'm, that's the goal, is really to get to that day where, where we can focus on improving publisher and adding the features that are important to the company, not to any one brand, but to the company, um, and not being so very involved in those launches. And I, I think I'll, I'll look to you for this opinion, but I think we're on our way. <laughs> Anything else? Question for Mike, maybe? We got one in the back. We'll call this uh, last question, maybe. I mean, Nelson from Oxford Media. Hey. Drupal is big on caching. What are you guys doing for that? What do you have on your, you know, the, the top well, layer? What about the middle layer? How do you flush cache? Time to live for your content and all that thing? Yeah, that's okay. probably a better question for Mike, <laughs> the non-suit wearing type. But, but yes, we're using all the best uh, you know, practices of the Drupal community for caching. But Yes, so we have actually five layers of cache. Yeah, five. Um, and that's really hard to manage, and we're actually building on that infrastructure to make it easier for us. So we have, you know, levels at the Alchemy level, which is going to stop us from those uh, huge spikes when we, you know, launch the next, you know, Battlestar Galactica or whatever we launch, uh, Defiance now. Um, and so that's going to stop us from that. We also use uh, a Varnish cache, which is also holding all of Drupal cache tables and to Varnish. Um, we obviously have opcode caching. Um, that's there. We have, um, you know, just the generic Drupal block caching and all that stuff. And even though it gets stored in the same place that, you know, some of those other caches, um, those are really important to maintain because um, not having something cached can really obviously affect your website. So um, we've been pretty successful with what we've done and there's been some speed bumps along the way, but uh, we're getting better. And I think ultimately that's going to help out the you know, greater Drupal community. Sure. Uh, one of, the one of the other advantages of us all working together is we're able to figure out caching things in Drupal modules that actually hurt caching. So we recently, uh, Sci-Fi recently discovered that uh, the context module, which is a very popular module for um, doing things such as placing blocks depending upon certain conditions actually breaks caching pretty poorly or pretty badly. 
So we've decided as a team that we shouldn't support that module and instead have come up with alternative solutions. So it's not just what we are doing for caching, but because we're all able to collaborate, we're able to provide better resources and better knowledge sharing on what you shouldn't do. All right, I think we're over. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody.